you know, each Easter we encounter the story of the resurrection. Right? But we have to ask ourselves, is it true? You know, what does it mean? What really happened during the resurrection? And what relevance does it have for our own lives? How, you know, just as this video shared, like, what does it mean to me? How do I apply that in my own life? What does the word resurrection mean? We try to understand the word resurrection and resurrection itself, but we're a little bit handicapped. And the reason that we're handicapped in our understanding is because our perspective is skewed. We think of ourselves as being physical people, and sometimes we have spiritual experiences because we think we are a physical being, right? Living in the physical world, and every so often we kind of get in touch with our spiritual side. But what we need to understand is that we're primarily spiritual beings, having a very limited physical experience in the world while we're on it. And when we understand that, everything changes. It's a game changer. Because we're all sitting here, and we kind of interact with each other, and we just focus on the physical. But actually, primarily, we're spiritual. We're not only spiritual beings, we're eternal beings. And knowing that, what would that do to our relationship with God and with each other? So I want to look at resurrection from that perspective today. <clears throat> what does it mean to be alive? Like, how do you test if you're alive? Right? Well, you could pinch yourself. Have you ever done that? <laughs> you kind of pinch yourself to see, like, am I alive? So you, you want to kind of, like, pinch yourself to see if you're really alive, right? Now, Jesus is interesting because he was, he was always controversial, always in your face with people, always challenging what was going on in the world around him, right? He, he thought outside the box. And because of that, he often said controversial and unexpected <coughs> things. Do you know that in Luke 9.60, right, he said, uh, one of his disciples said, you know, I have to go home. My father died. I'd like to take a few days off from the ministry to go home and take care of my father and bury him. And you know what Jesus said? It's like shocking when you think about it, right? He said, let the dead bury their dead. How do you think the relatives thought about this? That has to be shocking to them, right? Or the person who wanted to go and honor his father, he asked, can I get just like three days off, please? Jesus said, no, let the dead bury their dead, come with me and give life. So Jesus' understanding of death and life is wrapped up in this sentence. Why did he say that? Because he said you need, you need to give life. And even the people who will bury your dead father, they're dead themselves. What did he mean by that, right? We need to look at that. Well, Father Moon gave a kind of interesting explanation about Jesus' understanding of death and life, that we might understand these words ourselves better. And I want to just read these to you. In a sermon, he said, In these words of Jesus, we find two concepts of life and death. The first concept of life and death concerns the physiological functions of human beings. The second concept of life and death applied to those physically alive persons who were gathered together for the burial of the Father. Why then did Jesus indicate that those persons who were actually alive were dead? It was because, although they were physically alive, they were in a state of death in not knowing God, the source of life, and they had lost their purpose in life. <coughs> so when he said, let the dead bury the dead, he was saying, like, don't worry about your father. He's going to be taken care of. And these the people, the people around him will take care of him. But I want you to come with me because you have life, that you may share life with other people. So we see that the concept that Jesus had of life and death was a little bit different from the concept that people generally have, right? He also said in another um, statement in John 11:25, where it's recorded, <coughs> it says, Jesus tells us, he who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. So you might lose your physical life, but don't worry, because still you will be alive. Don't worry so much about your physical life, because what matters is your eternal spiritual life. 
And I think actually we could take to heart those words in John. Because what should we worry more about? Our physical life? I mean, of course, our physical life is important because it's the place where we grow our spirit. We grow and we have experiences. We learn to experience unconditional love, receive that love, give that love to others. Our physical life matters. That's not the point. I, I'm not trying to say it doesn't matter. But what matters most? Jesus is so focused on did people around him have spiritual life. That's what he wanted to give to people, right? You know, and uh, Father Moon concluded then from this statement and other statements given by Jesus and gave this definition of resurrection that I want to share with you. Passing from death to life is resurrection. It begins from the point of believing in God and receiving Jesus' words. Right? So that's what resurrection means. First of all, to have resurrection, can anybody have resurrection? <coughs> no, you have to kind of believe in God. You have to have this... You have to pay attention to your spiritual side, as it were. You have to connect to God, experience God's love. It's then you resurrect. I want to ask you, do you believe in resurrection? Have you ever seen anyone resurrect? I know I have. I see people resurrect all the time. Have you ever gone up to someone and you've shared something with them and you've given them hope? Essentially, you give them life when you give them hope. And right in front of your eyes, their whole face changes. Their demeanor changes. Because right in front of your eyes, you see their resurrection. So sometimes people are skeptical or doubtful of resurrection. But we experience it around us all the time. When we allow God's love to touch someone's life through us, we bring them hope and we bring them love. That is the resurrection. But I want to talk today about the victory of the cross. What was the resurrection that Jesus accomplished on the cross? That we can understand that and have appreciation for that, be grateful for that, but also, as that video said, ask, what does that mean in our own lives? We remember when Jesus was taken to the cross, right? His death on the cross was kind of squeezed in quickly before Passover. And there's all kinds of political stuff going on around the crucifixion of Jesus, and we studied that right last week. But the cross was Jesus' finest hour. How could dying on the cross be someone's finest hour? His faith was so incredibly deep, so much deeper than the Sanhedrins and the Pharisees and all the religious leaders around, the, around him that was supposedly so kind of like rocking awesome religious, right? But Jesus' faith had a different quality. How do we know that? We can know that because of the words attributed to him in the stories from the Bible, and I want to examine that. In one sense, Jesus was at the zero point. It's interesting. Resurrection normally happens in the middle of crisis. So if you've been in crisis in your life, don't worry. It might just be the place of your resurrection, depending on what you do, right? So on the cross, it was Jesus' finest hour. And I want to read a little bit... Um, from the passages uh, in the Bible, that we can kind of unpack that and understand that, and also read from a sermon that Reverend Moon gave about the crucifixion. He said, When Jesus saw that the three disciples failed to stay up with him through the night as he was praying alone in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember that? Before the crucifixion, he went up to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he had a simple request of his disciples. What was that simple request? Could, could you just stay awake? <coughs> Could you just stay awake and protect me while I'm praying? And what did they do? <laughs> they fell asleep. You know, that's indicative of where they were at. Like, Jesus was intensely worried about his ministry, about God's providence, about what would happen, what would be the fate of Israel. And he says, Could you pray with me? Could you protect me? Could you be with me in this hour? that they all fell asleep. But he came down and he said, he found them asleep. And then he said, wake up guys, remember what we're doing here. Why did we come here to pray tonight? Stay with me, pray with me. And he went off again to pray. And he came back and they were asleep again. Have you ever asked someone to do something with you, to help you, to support you, to stand with you? And then they space out? <laughs> right? 
What's your emotion in that moment? You want to kill them, right? <laughs> because they betrayed you. They didn't do the thing that you needed. And how much more desperate than anything you've ever needed was it for Jesus when he needed those disciples to pray with him? What makes Jesus the Messiah? What makes him the Son of God? What makes him, what made the victory of the cross was not what happened, but was his attitude to what happened because everything, your resurrection, my resurrection, lies in our attitude, not in the, you know, not in the external circumstances of our lives. If you think about the crucifixion, that happened to the lowest of the low. If you were a Roman citizen, you would not get crucified. It was considered too demeaning. Right? It was a terrible circumstance to be in. But God wrought a victory because of the quality of Jesus' heart. This was his response. It was because he realized the heart of God, who could not chastise or judge, though there had been many people who had opposed him for 4,000 years, speaking of God's situation. Even though people had opposed God for 4,000 years, leading up to the time of Jesus, still God, God could not chastise or judge. Similarly, you must experience the heart of Jesus that his disciples could not experience. His disciples did not get what was going on. But we are called to understand the heart of Jesus. And that's one thing that Reverend Moon discovered in 1936 when he was a young man, a teenager. He went up to pray on the mountainside, you know, behind his home village. And in tears he prayed on Easter morning in 1936 and Jesus came to him and shared many things with him about his suffering situation because people did not understand. Nevertheless, even though they didn't understand, he couldn't ring down judgment on them. How many times have you had people around you not understand, and what do you want to do? Rain down judgment <laughs> on them. But Jesus was the Messiah. He couldn't do that because he represented more than himself. <coughs> It says, when Jesus was being whipped and bearing the cross on his shoulder, he could have held grudges against heaven, like, how come you let this happen to me? How come I find myself in this situation? Or what have I done wrong? Like, why? Have you ever asked why of God? But Jesus couldn't afford to do that. Because he, had, he knew that God had been overcoming crises much more difficult than this in the 4,000 years of restoration. Jesus could not become resentful. He didn't even have room in his mind to think about anything but God. That's the game changer. In that moment of crisis when you're at zero point, what are you thinking about? Oh, poor me. I know I go to that place really easily. But Jesus didn't. That's what made the victory of the cross. Can you fathom the agony in God's heart when Jesus was dying on the cross? Here the children of the enemy were killing his only begotten son, and yet God could not treat the people killing Jesus as enemies. Can you imagine how difficult it was for God to swallow his pain and maintain a loving heart toward them? Jesus understood God's painful situation, and he knew that God had to maintain unconditional love even for his enemy Satan. Therefore, he loved the enemy soldiers who were killing him and prayed that God could forgive their sin. That's the victory of the cross. It wasn't just that Jesus had to be crucified, but in that zero point, in that moment of crisis, he revealed the heart of God. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. <coughs> 